All right, here we are, demo day seven. Um, can't believe it's getting to this point already, but here we are, I'm finally ready to rip off this roof. Um, and basically this whole entire section is gonna come off. You see how easily it comes off. Like it was super rotten. It was waterlogged and disgusting, so it definitely needed to go. So I think I was sitting on this camper a while because I was trying to figure out how I was gonna fix this roof. Um, I did a lot of thinking today and staring like you see there. Um, but then I kind of came up with a good plan and I executed it today and it actually turned out pretty good. So we'll see um, how sturdy it is once I actually finish it. So there's actually two sections of this roof that I'm ripping up. Um, there's a whole four foot section right there. I think it's four feet. I don't know. I didn't actually measure it. I just assumed it was. And then there's the back part right there, which is usually just whatever's left of four feet when the manufacturer puts these panels on. Um, so I ripped both of these sections up. Y'all know I like to work in four foot sections. And there were some of this roof, um, not roof, there were some of the... Uh, fridge vent that was rotten right there so I was like you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and take it up um, just to be on the safe side and I kind of also had a plan where I'm gonna stagger these panels so hopefully it'll work out pretty good when I put everything back together. Now this roof is entirely made of foam. There is no middle structural supports which is mind-blowing. Um, they do screw these um, eighth inch or quarter inch paneling to the aluminum frame on the sides but that is pretty much about it. The entire thing is made of foam. Now this is a new one for me because all of the roof repairs that I have done have been wood construction and so I've never done a foam construction one before which is probably why this took me so long because I had to do a lot of thinking and honestly I just couldn't find any other good videos on how to repair it. There was also a little bit um, past the inside panel of the four foot section in the back that was bad. So I'm gonna make this a full four foot section in the back. Um, and there's actually two walls right there. So I'm gonna try to make it not really a load bearing, but it kind of will be. Now right here, I have um, my uh, saw guide and I basically just use that to draw a line all the way across and I'm getting my multi-tool here and kind of cutting through the foam. Um, I want a nice straight line and so uh, my when my panel comes in, um, everything will be nice and straight and I can measure exactly how big I need to make this frame right here. And as you can see, this is what we're left with after I've cut everything away. Um, it's pretty crazy how bad this camper is. There's no floor in this camper right now either. So good times guys, good times. Now this back piece right here wasn't really rotten, but it was kind of yucky. And I actually, I wanted to use it as a template. Um, so I got my multi-tool and it screwed from the outside in and I don't wanna have to take the side off. So I got my multi-tool with a metal blade and cut the screw a little bit and then got my hammer right there and wedged it under and just kind of lifted it up to break the rest of the screw. And then the whole thing just popped out. Now right here I was just being lazy and didn't want to go move the ladder to the other side to cut it. So I kind of just scooted it over and then came up and then just pulled it straight from there and it came off. Um, so I'll end up cutting all those screws off with an angle grinder and uh, moving on. Now I told you I was going to make a template out of this and that's pretty much what I did. I ended up cutting four of these. I just laid it on the piece of wood and traced it. Could I have been more precise? Yes. Yes, I could have. I could have measured exactly where the arch is and gone that way, but I don't know. It just didn't really seem necessary. The, it wasn't really that rotten, so I could get a good trace out of it. So that's going to be just judged by how good or bad your piece of wood is. If you can trace it just like this and then, you know, the arch is really just about how you make it. It's all about your skill level. Um, so if you don't have really great skill level, maybe don't try this because it does need to be pretty close to what that original piece of wood is. But if you're relatively good at cutting on a straight line or a curved line, then this is going to be the method for you, which is exactly what I did. Just go slow, pay attention, and it'll come out just fine. I just used a jigsaw to cut this out. Nothing fancy. It was super easy. Um, I just did this and repeated the process three more times and then I could start framing out um, that piece that I'm going to stick in eventually. Now I also do need some pieces for the sides so I'm going to cut this an inch and a half and I did that because I measured the very ends of the arch wood right there and it was inch and a half so that's what I went with because I wanted it to match up with the existing aluminum framing that's in there already. Um, so my plan is to basically make a 
um, rectangular piece of framing that will just sit in the entire roof of the camper and then I can screw the side pieces in to the existing aluminum framing. So that is my game plan um, and it actually turned out pretty good. I had to kind of map out some things because I do have a shower in that bathroom and I also have a fan in that bathroom. So I had to measure those out and measure what um, dimensions I needed the fan, which is always 14 by 14. Um, and then the shower, which I can't even remember. It was like 13 and a half or like 21 and a quarter or something like that. Um, but I did have to make sure the positioning of the shower was correct. So right here, I'm pretty much just drilling some pilot holes, making sure it's square, putting some wood glue on it, and drilling some three-inch screws in there. Um, nothing fancy, nothing crazy. So this is me. I'm using a piece of wood that's 21 and a quarter that I've already cut out. I think it's 21 and a quarter. Don't quote me there. Um, I've already cut it out, and I'm basically just using it as a spacer right there to make sure that these... Um, two more, I guess I'll call them trusses, if that's what you want to call them, framing supports are in the right position. Um, and then I ended up putting another one there at the right spacing apart. Now this square 14 by 14 right here actually came out of the original roof. So I was like, well, I already have it. I might as well reuse it. So I just drilled some pilot holes in it and screwed it directly into the frame that I had already made. It was also already the right thickness, which was great. So if you don't have to work harder, don't do it. You can use whatever you already had. Um, I'm just adding some supports for the sides right here just to be on the safe side. Um, again, just whatever scrap wood that I had right there um, because I already know that the vent will screw directly into that aluminum piece. So I don't have to worry about it being flush on the roof side. I need it to be flush on the ceiling side though. Um, and you'll see why in just a minute. All right, so we're getting there. We're almost there. Um, and after I screwed all these in, I think I used um, two inch screws. I'm taking a little bit of a break because it's been a long day and I forgot to eat. And I get hangry and then my brain doesn't work. So I'm drinking some fresh milk where you have a local farmer here who I get um, fresh raw milk from and it's delicious. They apparently say it's better than water for hydration, but who knows? All right, so it's time for a test fit. We see if this fits or not, and I was super proud of myself for this, that it fit on the first try. Um, fit absolutely great, so that's what I'm going with. So I brought it down, and then I've always said that I wanted to put the ceiling panel on and then just drop the whole thing in, and I've never done it before, and I was like, you know what? Today is the day. I'm going to try it, and I'm going to do it. So this is just wood glue. Um, you can use like liquid nails, any construction adhesive, whatever you want to use. This is just what I had. Um, so a bunch of wood glue all over the place. And then I got my um, paneling right there. That is just quarter inch plywood and stuck it down, lined it up and stapled it down just like I would normally staple a ceiling in. Um, I think these are like inch and a quarter crown staples or something like that. Um, so just staple it in. I didn't bother cutting the piece of wood. I didn't bother doing any of that. And you'll see why in just a second. So for right now, I kind of just tacked it in there, just put a bunch in. And then I got my router with a flush trim bit. Um, and I just trimmed off the edge right here. It seemed like it was a whole lot easier than trying to make it square and fit. So that's just what I did. Think smarter, not harder, right? Now, next, I have uh, two more like supports right here in the middle that you guys saw. And so I just lifted it up and marked on the ceiling side where the support was. And I'll just run some staples in through those two. Um, I probably won't run any staples in around the shower until after I routed that out. But that'll come later. I was getting tired and it's like 6 o'clock, so... Now I can take the whole piece up here and just come and set it in place. By the way, this was very heavy. I'm currently sitting on the bed with a back brace on because I try to do this by myself and I like pinch something in my back. So that's where I'm at right now. But it's worth it because it fit and I don't have to worry about the ceiling, which is awesome. So I kind of just wiggled this in place. Um, I did end up cutting a hole in the corner right there with a hole saw so that vent can kind of slip through there and it fit perfectly. So that's where we're at. That's going to save me a whole lot of time trying to get the ceiling in. So I think if I can have the chance to do it, I'll definitely do it this way from now on. The only downside is I got to do the electrical and all that stuff from the roof side, but that's okay. After that, I just screwed it in and then I tarped it 
and I'll come back to it for another day because I'm tired and my kids have school tomorrow. So I got to go get everybody ready. Anyway, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed that. This was a crazy day, but um, finally getting to the repairs and I'll do the rest um, hopefully sometime this week. So anyway, y'all have a wonderful night.